Hello, thank you for coming out. My name is Dave Bradley. I uh, started building guitars a few years ago, and I'd like to talk to you about uh, my process and how I got there. I grew up in a manufacturing family. My family owned a manufacturing business about an hour and a half north of here. Um, I grew up going into the shop every day with my dad, a shop that looks a little bit like that. Uh, not nearly as clean, though. Um, we did sheet metal fabrication. Um, so I've always built things, but it was in a manu manufacturing sense, which is um, more about repeatability. You need to create a process that is repeatable so anybody off the street can come and do that and make a perfect product, theoretically. Uh, even with CNC equipment like this, it's all about the process and taking kind of the hand craftsmanship out of it. Uh, that being said, about 2012, a lot of things in my life changed. My role at work changed, my home life changed, and I had a whole lot of free time on my hands. So I spent a lot of time in my dad's workshop. I found these old tools. These are my great-grandfather's planes. It's actually the same plane. I uh, fixed them up. Uh, put a blade in them, and uh, the first time I took a pass over a piece of wood with a plane, I was like, oh my god, what's this about? I always thought woodworking was more about um, table saws, two-by-fours, and plywood, kind of uh, how manufacturing was for me. So I decided to set myself up to do some woodworking. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. I built myself this workbench. I knew I wanted to be uh, hand tools. I just found them uh, to be amazing to use. So my parents' neighbor had a guitar from her childhood that spent many years in a New York apartment in a hot closet, and the bridge fell off, and somebody repaired it for her, as you can see. Um, so I did some research, and I found out that it would cost more to, to repair this repair than it was the guitar was worth. So I told her that, and um, she said, well, if you want to try to fix it, you can have it. So I did that. I found a piece of rosewood, borrowed the dog bone from my parents' dog, and made a saddle, and I made a new bridge and saddle and put it on this guitar. I thought, oh, this is pretty neat. And I had a book on building guitars since high school, and I thought, I'm going to give this a shot. So I started right from the beginning. That's kind of the way I understand things best is right from the very beginning. So with a raw plank of lumber from, my, uh, from a walnut tree in my parents' backyard, I resawed the backs. Um, I found basically all the other materials. I wasn't sure if I was going to be successful making a, a guitar or not. So I found all the other materials. The soundboard is redwood from a fence. The uh, neck is mahogany from a friend's porch that he was demolishing. So I went through all these steps. I kind of obsessed about it. And I came out with two guitars. I thought I would have a practice one just in case I messed one up. Um, but they both turned out OK, and they both sounded pretty good. And I was, I was hooked. So I quickly started three more after that. Um, the interesting thing with these is there's always something new and different to try. Like, making a neck joint with a saw that I spent, you know, cutting into that box that I spent about a month and a half on, probably. It was always something new, but it was always exciting. So I made three more guitars. This is one of the three. Uh, they're all modeled after Gibson double O's, uh, which I bought plans for. So my first year, I went from nothing to building five guitars. I spent a lot of time in my basement. Um, I would make my tools as much as possible. I would make this, I made this rosette cutter. Um, I would do as many things as hand, by hand as I could. The first two guitars I made, I actually did with almost all hand tools, with the exception of maybe a bandsaw and a drill press. Um, this kind of stuff, making the rosettes, the hard stuff, kept me up at night. I'd wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go, do that for a few nights and think, okay, now's the time to do this. So I would do all this hard stuff at like 3, 4 in the morning. Um, 
Since then, I've added some tools. Uh, cutting these binding ledges by hand was not easy, so I've added some routers, uh, things like that. Um, people ask me, oh, you must play guitar. I really don't play guitar. <laughs> I'm a bass player. My fingers work. I can make sounds on a guitar. I'm on a guitar. I can make chords, but I'm not really a guitar player. I find um, the guitar is an interesting thing. It's, it's something that nobody really understands, the difference between a good guitar and a great guitar. Oftentimes it's said that uh, a great guitar is on the verge of self-destruction. It's light enough that it'll make great sound, but strong enough to hold the strings for years. And I find that fascinating. Um, there's also a lot of different things you can do with a guitar. Um, once you realize that the only things that need to be there are the frets, the strings, they need to be in a certain position, and everything else is pretty much wide open to whatever your interpretation is. So um, I built you know, what I like. Uh, a lot of these are from local hardwoods because I feel bad using um, you know, exotic timbers. And that's about all I have. I moved here about a little bit less than two years ago, and as soon as my shop is set up, I'm going to uh, build a few more. Thank you.